Okay. Go. Just, just go. You know, uh, Lowry Street. Is there a depot? No, Front Street is the street that goes right by the railroad. Well, okay, you got Lowry Street, which was named after the Dr. Lowry Dr. we Lowry. had. Right. And and as I recall, you know, when I first remember coming to Smyrna many years ago, decades ago, your daddy had an office in Smyrna. One of the only agents ever uh, had an office in Smyrna and in Murfreesboro. All right. He had a, he had two offices. And then um, as time went on, though, that end of Lowry Street where your daddy was, it kind of was suppressed a little bit. Most of the activity was over there on Washington Street and and uh, Sam Davis. And, right. Uh, many years ago, speaking of Sam Davis Road, when when the old Nashville Highway was called the Dixie Highway, right. Eden Springs Road was originally called Sam Davis Road. And it came all the way into Smyrna, and there were two crosses over the railroad track. Right. One of them was the Sam Davis Road that extended over, and it went on, the Sam Davis Road went on down to Florence Road. Right. I remember that, which okay. is close to Nice's Mill, kind of. So anyhow, it goes down there, and then, of course, you got Florence uh, Road down there, and that's where the church was. There was two churches, and, and it's hard to believe, but there were two churches, and they were competing against each other. To who, who could have the biggest congregation? Who could have the biggest congregation? And they were pouring money into them left and right. And Bill Nash, local dentist, you know, his, um, his uh, ancestors are buried in the cemetery next to the church. And if it hadn't been for uh, Smyrna historian uh, Francis Crick Victory, uh, we would have never known about the cemetery or the church. And she, she brought it to light. But what what interests me most of all, I think, Bill, is um, is when um, people use uh, Front Street, but they don't know the whole history of Front right. Street. Front Street was created by the railroad. They bought several thousand acres of land on the other side of Front Street, uh, on the other side of Lowry Street, actually 41. Right. And, and then they were going to subdivide it. They were going to build uh, all these nice big homes on that side of the railroad track. And several nice big homes were built over there. Right. And they were going to build a town right in the center of Front Street. And that's where you had your assembly hall. Um, you met, and then the jail was right behind the assembly hall. I had no idea that Smyrna had a jail. They had a jail there. Oh, yeah. It was... Uh, it was like a 15 by 15 box. It was steel. Somebody spent a lot of money on it because it was steel. It was solid steel. And then it was bricked around it. It had a front door and two windows. That's wild. And that may have been when Granddad was sheriff back in the 50s and 60s. They used to have a lot of bootlegging going on in Smyrna and Laverne. And Granddaddy was known for dressing up like a hobo. So he went undercover, went down by the railroad tracks there, Smyrna or maybe Laverne. And his own deputies arrested him. Yes. And they took him back to the, I, I, it was like Andy Griffith. They took him back to the jail, and they're like, you moron, look what you've done. You arrested the sheriff. I, I was going to bring that, I'm glad you brought that up, because that's probably one of the most satirical things we have about Smyrna. But, but was they arrested your granddaddy for pretending was, to be a hobo. And the thing and he was, was the sheriff. Yeah. And the thing was about the hobos, uh, they knew that there was a, a, a friend's house, and it was marked. And the hobos knew that if they got off the train in Smyrna, where the team, I don't know what the name of the dealership is now, Tomlin dealership, right. used to be Ridley dealership. It used to be nice for Sam Ridley's dealership. Right. right dealership. Well, prior to that, it was a, a large Victorian-style home right. with a big barn behind it. Right. And so the hobos knew if they got off the train in Smyrna, they could go to this house, and the woman would feed them, and they could spend the night in the barn. Isn't that wild? And then Smyrna also had racing. Marty, uh, they had racing there. Yeah. Well. And what about Monkey Woman Bridge? The bridge that's down at Cannonsburg is called the Monkey Woman Bridge, I believe. Yeah, that used to be in Smyrna. That was in Smyrna, but it's at Cannonsburg. Now. Yeah. Because yeah. a lady live down there or something? Well, that's the 
There's a that's the rumor, as they say. But it was called Monkey Woman Bridge. Right. I, never, I, never, I don't understand that. But. What it was the the there's two or three different theories behind the Monkey Woman Bridge. One of them, the most prevalent, I think, is a a woman who lost her child very early in life, and she kind of went off. And, went crazy, uh, yeah. Yeah, went went crazy, and and um, and lovers would stop on the bridge. You know, it was kind of a romantic spot. It was a hot spot back in the day in Smyrna, so they would stop on the bridge. And the Monkey Woman Bridge, um, she would supposedly be hiding underneath the bridge. And they would go under the bridge. And and so they... Certain well, things went on. Things went on. Things happened. We don't know, but something about having babies. <laughs> something like so that. So she would come up, and she would be on all fours, crawling up the side. But it must have been a rough time. And she would slap on the car, or she would scream, or she would squeal. And yeah. that's where Monkey Woman Monkey Bridge... Monkey Woman Bridge. But they got the name Monkey Woman because she was on all fours a lot. And she was scrawny. That's something to do. Maybe like, you like horses, right? Because you're them. known for barrel riding. I had no idea that you were. A, I've known you all my life that you did that. Yeah. You did that for years, didn't you? Yeah. I did that. Have you I ever did. thought about what Smyrna would be without Nissan? Or what would Rutherford County be? Well, what would Middle Tennessee be like without Nissan? Here, okay, I love Nissan. It was so good for my business. You know, my office is right across the street. I love it. But I know there's a lot of people that miss Old Smyrna. I miss Old Smyrna. Right. The, the three or four thousand people lived there at one time. Yeah. Maybe, maybe a little more than that. But. but that's when Front Street was really popular. We had a, a very exclusive women's dress shop on Front Street. We had a nice restaurant on Front Street. We had... Um, you had Rossi's. Do you remember Rossi's? Yeah, but it's still there. It's yeah. like Travolta now. Okay. And it's still good. It's delicious. So, and then the Smyrna Library was right there. It was, it, uh, Ronnie uh, Parker was a contractor and he took what was left. It was an old house and it was in a terrible state of disrespair. And so he took it, he renovated it, and made his office out of it. And it was beautiful. And we used to go over to his office and socialize. And, and he, it was really nice. And from what I understand, lightning hit it and there's nothing left anymore. What about Seward Air Force Base? Can you imagine right during the World War II, there was an Air Force Base in Rutherford County in Smyrna, Tennessee. Now, I, I read... The barracks are still there off of Wakely. Some yeah. Some of those barracks. Yes, they still are. Uh, base housing or whatever you yeah. want to call it. But what was interesting, I read the history of Oak Ridge recently, and I read about a, a fella, and I, I actually even wrote about this. Uh, there was a fella that who did a premonition about Oak Ridge 40 years before Oak Ridge was created. They have a tribute to him. They have a trail that you can hike the trail around Oak Ridge is a tribute to him. But he forecast Oak Ridge and he forecast the air base in Smyrna. The air base was created to protect Oak Ridge. Correct. And that's what it said in the book I read. Well, I didn't know that. I thought that was most interesting. That is why I had no idea. So that's something new. So, yeah, so they decided to use the airbase or create the airbase here in Smyrna, a central location. Right. Primary was to protect Oak Ridge. That's wild. Now, Front Street, getting back to that, you know, they put the assembly hall on Front Street. Right. And they put the jail behind it. Right. Your father was a sheriff. Well, my grandfather. Being grandfather, I'm sorry, yeah. your grandfather was a sheriff. And then we had another sheriff in Smyrna, and he was a, a big old cowboy. He rode a white horse. <laughs> he carried a 44 pistol. And when the trains would come through Smyrna, they would stop. And at the time, they were referred to as Hell on Wheels. Now, Hell on Wheels meant that the criminal element, the Mafia, whoever was coming through to pick up moonshine off, out of Smyrna, right. and it came off Rock Springs Road. Right, the moonshine. The moonshine came off Rock Springs Road, came into Smyrna. Well, the sheriff was there to make sure nobody was the robbed, robbed, hurt, yeah. the whole nine yards. So the Hell on Wheels, the criminal element, would have a boxcar, and it was set up for gambling. 
it have another box car and it had bird cages in it set up for that. Right. And then it had another box car set up that would be just Some for <laughs> drinking. Right. So that's where the term Hell on Wheels came from as they came through Smyrna. And they had to make sure the moonshine's getting to where it needed oats because there was money involved. Oh, yeah. Big time money. So our sheriff would go bust steals out on Rock Springs Road. Yeah. And he arrested one guy on Rock Springs Road and he confiscated his steel. He put the man in the jail behind the assembly hall, brought the steel in right. to use it as evidence. Right. The guy broke out of jail, took the steel, set it on the building where uh, it's known as uh, Regal Furniture. Yeah. He set it on top of that building to hide it. Griffin? Who runs Regal Furniture? Uh, uh, no. Rusty Griffin. Uh, well, I think it's Sam Coleman now. Okay. So he took the steel over there to Regal Furniture. He put it on the. He put it on top of the building. Is that where he could still operate it? I well, guess. no, he could hide it. He, he hid it. Yeah. See, uh, the, people made money. Up. That's how people made a living too. Even if it was, uh, it was to put food on the table, but also, I mean, it was illegal. You imagine back in the 1920s, there were speakeasies, and uh, uh, people couldn't drink, but they had to have the moonshine. It wasn't a good time to be an alcoholic. You couldn't get yeah. your, your stuff. But. Yeah, that wasn't a good time at all for that. Yeah. So anyhow, the sheriff, uh, he can't find the, the steel. Now, you know, Regal Furniture used to be a car dealership. A long time. Or, For, or a Ford. It was. it was a Ford dealership. Right. And then it. And that's why it has those big windows. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyhow, the sheriff can't find the steel. So he can't prosecute the guy because he doesn't have the evidence. The guy's turned loose. He comes back later, gets his steel, takes it back out to Rock Springs. And Road. all he had to do was look up on the roof. Yeah, if he thought, about, he thought it. about it. But the problem was, the sheriff went back out looking for him to catch him again. Do you know where the church is out on Rock Springs Road yes. right there? Yeah. Okay. Um, it was in that vicinity right there where they went looking for the sheriff after he didn't come back. Right. And he had been shot and killed and leaned up against the tree. That's the end of that story. That's the end of that story right there. <laughs> but on, also on Front Street, uh, like I said, the, the, the uh, railroad, they bought a lot of land to build homes and everything right. and subdivided them. And we had uh, what, what is now called the Snake Pit was the Smyrna City Cafe. Right. It was also a bus stop, a Greyhound bus stop. It was also a taxi stop. It was also a cafe. So it was a little bit of everything. It was a little bit of everything. But it, that's the hub. Was Front Street was the hub. Front Street was the hub. That's where the history is. That's where Smyrna's best history is. Right. Now, the problem you had with um, people moving on that side of town and buying the lots from the railroad, right. they were too expensive. Yeah. So they moved on the other side. Hence, you live on this side of the tracks or that side of the tracks? Yeah, hence. Right, hence. Wh which, which, which side of the tracks are you from? I'm on the poor side. Well, it wasn't necessarily the poor side. There were some pretty nice homes. Do you I think know Walter King Hoover. Wasn't there a funeral home down there? Hoover's funeral home. Yeah, there was. Walter King Hoover is part. That's old Smyrna too. Bio. Old Smyrna names. The Victories, Crossland. Yeah. I mean, we could go on Ridley. I mean, that, there's a whole bunch of them. Yes, there are. But there's Smyrna a lot of old Smyrna an names. Integral part of Rutherford County. Everybody thinks Rutherford County. They think of Murfreesboro. Well, don't forget the Waldrons. Waldrons. They're old Smyrna. And names. they're big in Laverne too. But the fact is, Smyrna today probably employs more people than I know. Murfreesboro's got the VA. We got MTSU, State Farm, others. Smyrna, you've got. I mean, Nissan probably hires. Let's say. Well, look at all the satellites. There. The satellite. There's probably a hundred thousand yeah. employees there. Yeah. We did good. Okay, I guess we're three. Good job. Let me get a picture.